All right, a happy Tuesday to you. Uh, it's Tuesday, September 29th. I'm meteorologist Brian McClure. Got to start with a shout out to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Even if they're not your team, I get it. You know, not everybody has the same team. You got to admit, we need some positives in 2020. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's cool to see a Stanley Cup champion, but it's especially cool for me in that I live in Tampa Bay. And if you're not familiar with the Lightning franchise, they're a fantastic franchise, really well run. Uh, they've had great teams for many, many, many years. And so well deserving. Congratulations. 2020 Stanley Cup champions. Man, that just sounds great to hear. All right, we've got a tropical wave we're tracking in the Caribbean. We've got a cold front that we're tracking headed toward Florida. We were talking about that yesterday. We're going to talk about it again today. But I want to start with something that's a little bit more interesting. Here you can see Google Earth. I've uh, zoomed in for you. There you can see the Caribbean right there. And there's the Gulf of Mexico, right? I want to show you something that's really neat that I don't talk a lot about, but meteorologists are familiar with it. You see this area of southeastern Mexico right here, okay? You notice right in this area, okay? So let me tilt this back for you and give you a good idea of what we're talking about. Okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, this area, let me draw a line. Right up in here is the Bay of Campeche, right? This is what we call the Gulf of Twintepec, okay? Okay, right in there. And this right here is the pass, what we call Chevela Pass. And a lot of times what will happen is when you head into the wintertime, you'll get these really strong winds that come down here into the Bay of Campeche behind cold fronts, and they will race down through this pass uh, what we will call the Tuantepecero Pass, or the Tuantepecero Wind, a lot of times is what they'll call it. Uh, the, the town, where it gets its name, is from this little town right in here in Mexico. Uh, but there's a pass between this mountain range and this mountain range. Now, why do I bring this up? I bring this up because not only is it a neat feature that a lot of people don't realize that wind flow can go from Atlantic to Pacific, Pacific to Atlantic, uh, Gulf of Mexico to Pacific, but it can actually, believe it or not, have an impact on weather features in this part of the globe. Uh, so this is just kind of a neat little thing that a lot of people don't realize. Well, let me jump out. Okay, so there it is right there. Now let me jump to this map. Okay, so this is what you're more familiar in seeing, kind of a 2D view. Here's your Gulf, or uh, here's your Caribbean. Here's your Gulf of Mexico, right? And here would be the pass, right there. Watch what happens when the cold front that is currently moving down through the Gulf of Mexico and towards Florida. Watch what happens tomorrow in that pass. It's, it's really, really neat, okay? To give you a good perspective, by the way, what we're looking at here is wind flow, model wind flow. So you can see the winds flowing like this. Okay, and the strongest of winds are where you see these darker colors like that coming down. So it's basically coming off the coast of Texas and Louisiana. It's racing southward. And that makes sense because your cold front is right about in there this morning. And it's headed southward. Okay, let's go forward in time. You see the strong winds that butt up against the coast of Mexico. See them right in there? Okay, they can't go anywhere up against these high, tall mountains right there. But watch what happens when it hits that pass. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Wow, check that out. Look at how they go rushing across land and they shoot out the other side. See that? They come right out here into the Pacific. Okay, so it's just kind of a cool little feature that we don't talk a lot about, especially in tropical season and summer season, because it doesn't always happen. It tends to happen when you get... Uh, something like a strong cold front. Okay, well this cold front, notice where it ends up by tomorrow morning. It ends up right about in there. So it's the first big autumn front of the season, not just for Florida, but really across the southeastern U.S. It's a very, very strong front. So these winds are coming in like this, all right? And so what happens is if they run into mountains, they just stop. But because there's a little pass in between the mountains, they race all the way out into the Pacific. And again, that's the Gulf of Tuantepec uh, down there. And so it's called a few different things, but essentially it's just a mountain pass 
and it goes between the two mountain ranges. Uh, people in Mexico and tropical specialists have known about it for years. We've known about it for years. I just don't talk a lot about it because it doesn't have a lot to do with our weather. It's just kind of a neat feature. Uh, it does have a lot, though, to do with sometimes sparking up tropical systems in the Pacific, sometimes even interactions, believe it or not, with this area between the Atlantic and the Pacific, and it causes upwelling of the water in the Pacific right there, which can cool the water. It also leads to more nutrient uh, areas uh, of the Pacific down there. I mean, there's just all kinds of things. And this just goes to show you how much is going on in our world that we're still researching. I, I mean, this is fascinating. We've known about it for years, but yet a lot of people don't know about it. Okay. Now that I've shown you that cool feature, let's get to the tropical wave. Okay, so we just talked about the cold front uh, moving into Florida, which, by the way, let me show you the moisture field, and this will give you a good idea of the front. Okay, so here comes the dry air on the back side. You see it right in here, right? Okay, now it's moving in that direction. So watch what happens. Tomorrow morning it comes racing into central Florida and then it looks like it stops. It just kind of stops. See that? Right about the I-4 corridor. Okay? And that can happen a lot. That happens a whole lot with fronts this time of year. It looks like it just kind of hovers around central Florida. There you can see by Thursday into Friday it's still just kind of sitting there. There's your front right about in there. So you have all this deep tropical moisture to the southeast and you have all this really dry air to the north. Okay, so that's what's going to, from about the I-4 corridor northward of Florida, uh, a little bit cooler, a little bit drier, less humid the next few days, starting tomorrow. Okay, now let's though go back and look at tropics. So yesterday we were talking about tropical waves. There is a tropical wave currently located right about in there. Okay, and it's gonna be moving westward. Let's go forward in time, this is through tomorrow, and you can see it's right about there now, okay? And again, it's continuing to move west through the Caribbean. Now let's go forward in time, and on Thursday, it appears to be somewhere right about in there, and maybe trying to develop. Keep in mind that tropical waves and tropical lows that move into this part of the country, it's very common late September into October and even November, because this is the one area, southern Gulf and the Caribbean, that the water temperatures stay warm well into the autumn season. So. That being said, the other thing is, when you get a strong cold front, a lot of stuff starts happening. I mean, a whole lot. Number one, remember where I just talked about how the winds come down and through the pass? Well, look at how that dry air has made it all the way into the Pacific. That's pretty neat, right? It's neat, but it also can play a role in what happens in the tropics. Okay, so you have a tropical wave coming right along here. When it starts to interact with land, what will happen is, the winds will go slower on this side due to land interaction with these really tall mountains down here in Honduras. And the winds will go stronger on the northern side. That gets what we call cyclogenesis to start occurring. In other words, when it's here, here, and here, it's just a wave of energy. But when it gets to here, all of a sudden now it can start to turn. That can happen, okay? The other thing, too, is what starts to happen if you have a front involved is that also cyclogenesis can be spurred up, meaning this is an area of low pressure along that front. That's essentially what a front is, is an area of lower pressures. And then on the backside is higher pressure that's pushing it from behind, okay? So what will happen is, let's say this wave just keeps moving west like this, it tries to spin up, but it hasn't yet, and then it gets to the southern tail of this front, what will start to happen is, it's going to start to feel that lower pressure and fill in. In other words, it's gonna to start to go, ooh, I like this area, and I'm gonna start turning right in here. That's why we watch these areas. Okay, so let's go forward in time to Friday, and sure enough, what appears to be happening, here, I'll go back and forth, you see that? Look at that. What do you know? There appears to be spinning down there, just east of Belize, southern Yucatan Peninsula, and north of Honduras. There it is right there. If you've ever been to Roatan, Honduras, it's located right about in there. So we're talking about right in that little cranny, right in there. That's such a common place. So at that point in time, what you have is you have a front that's right in here, 
you have a tropical wave trying to develop into a tropical system. You have really dry air back here and a high pressure back here. And you have dry air that's rushing all the way down here through this pass. A lot going on, right? A whole lot of cool stuff. Okay, so where does it go after that? Well, yesterday, if you watched my talk, I talked about how it would have a hard time going north into this high pressure up here. So instead, what tends to happen is one of two things. It either drifts to the west into the Yucatan, which maybe then it weakens or falls apart, or it can sometimes drift out along this front. They love to follow the fronts. And you can see that tail of that front all the way to the northeast. Well, it looks like what this one does is it kind of sits still. It tries to go to the northeast, but it, it's kind of stopped and it doesn't. And then it tries to drift to the west and maybe it does. Okay. And again, this is just one computer model run, but maybe it drifts over here as high pressure starts to settle in like this. So maybe it kicks it back to that way. That's possible. It's also possible that it does something like this, or it's possible that it just sits down here and does nothing. Okay, but this is all the way out to next week. This is why I started with the Tuante Pacer Pass and those winds. I know, it's, a, it's like a long loop back to it. And you're probably thinking, gosh, why did he even bring that up? Well, besides the fact that it's really cool, what I want you to notice is when you go out to next week, okay, so let's just assume that this first one does try to develop and it's, I don't know, let's just say it's somewhere in here. At this point in time, it looks like maybe there, okay? But it's, it's too early to know. What I want you to notice is that something secondary happens on the back side. Okay, so here's the first one going across the Yucatan Peninsula, right? And there it is somewhere in there. Or I want you to watch now is not here. Okay, let's forget about the first one. Look at the second tropical wave coming along somewhere back in here. Doesn't look like it's developing at that point next week, but at some point, look at that. It does look like it tries to spin a little. Again, same spot, right? Land interaction with Honduras and Nicaragua. Maybe right there tucked in the Western Caribbean. See how it's trying to develop? That's the secondary tropical wave that's come in. And then it does try to develop as it moves northward up into the Gulf. Again, it's going to run into the same problems, though, of where does it go if it does develop because there's a high pressure up in here. There is still this old front kind of through here. So would it try to move like this or would it try to go like that and then be pushed westward because of the high pressure? Too early to know, but the reason I bring this up is because here's what happens in reality. When you're looking at these tropical waves, they enter the Caribbean from the Atlantic. Okay, so they enter like this. Here's one here, and here's one here. So they enter from the east, and they move westward. But it gets a lot more complicated than that, and our computer model guidance does a pretty good job at figuring this out, but humans do a better job at realizing that there are interactions that happen between the Pacific and the Atlantic and the Central American area, right in here, okay? If you have a wind flow coming down like this, eventually it's going to split and it's going to do features like that. It just naturally will do that. And you'll get these little eddies. You'll not only get upwelling, you'll sometimes get eddies like this where a little semi-high pressure or a little tiny low pressure will develop. And so what will happen, believe it or not, is that something like that, an old cold front coming all the way down like that, and strong winds coming around on the backside can actually develop its own little tropical wave or tropical low on the backside in the Pacific. Why does that matter? Well, because don't think of Central America as a land barrier where things can't get through. No, it doesn't work that way. Moisture can go back and forth across Central America so easily because it's just a thin strip of land. I will admit there is more mountainous areas up in here. So yes, it does go back and forth a lot more down in here but it also goes back and forth in here. All right, all that being said, here's where I'm going with this point. Watch the first wave. Again, it goes westward right across the Yucatan. Who knows where it goes from there, but let's just assume it kind of stays on course and is drifting around the Yucatan. Watch the second one though, and it has entered the Caribbean, and here it is right in here. As it's moving along, what has happened is that wind that has come down through the Cheval Pass Chevella Pass, sorry, excuse me, and the Tawana Wind has come down 
and it appears as though tropical moisture is kind of moving like this, okay? So if we go forward in time next week, watch when the second tropical wave tries to develop. It's not until it gets to about here. So sometimes what will happen, believe it or not, is you'll get a little bit of feedback like this, and you'll get a spin up. So you have your tropical wave moving in here, you have some tropical feedback right in here, and then all of a sudden, boom, you get a spin up right in there. That can happen. And so there's so many interactions, and then watch what it does. Then it drifts around. So it's almost like you get into this gyre situation where it's just everything's moving around the same thing. You have the front in here, you had the first one come over here, you had the winds coming down here, and now you have this weird feedback right in here where all of a sudden you have almost like multiple systems trying to develop in the same area. It just becomes a hotbed for tropical development. Will it play out this way? Who knows? And then this one, by the way, the models are having the hardest time. Look at this next week. I mean, look, it just kind of spins around. Uh, could it develop? Could it not? Could it drift to the north? Who knows? Could it just sit there? Could it go west? It might not ever even develop. And that's one of the reasons why you'll see on my Facebook page a lot that I say, number one, I'm not into hype. Number two, I'm not into just taking one model run and saying, oh, this is what's going to happen. Or, ooh, look, people, we could have a massive hurricane on the Florida coast two and a half weeks from now. That's irresponsible. That's what non-meteorologists do because they want to drive traffic to their pages. I'm not going to do that. So instead, what I'm going to talk about is cool things like wind features, interactions with land and moisture, and I will tell you why things tend to develop down here. But I'm not going to go into the what-ifs of a whole week and a half, two weeks from now. I can tell you right now, any meteorologist that says they know what's going to happen a week and a half, two weeks out, they're lying to you. <laughs> the science isn't that exact. We can give you generalizations. We can give you patterns like, hey, it's going to be cooler in the east. Or, hey, there's going to be more fronts in the south. We can do that. Absolutely. We've come a long ways. But I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen to these. So there you go. That's the Tuesday update. Uh, the first tropical wave looks like it moves somewhere into the Yucatan Channel or around the Yucatan Peninsula by this weekend. The second wave is entering the Caribbean at that time, and the second one likely won't try to develop until next week. So it's possible we could have one tropical storm developing this weekend and maybe a second one trying to develop about a week after it, you know, the next week, like next week. Um, so it's definitely a hotbed for areas, but keep in mind too, it might not matter if neither one of them drift north. It could just be one of those things where we're going, yeah, big deal, tropical storms down to the south. It becomes a big deal when the pattern to the north up here across North America and across the U.S. changes. That's what matters. In other words, will a high pressure not keep it suppressed to the south? Will another cold front come down and then all of a sudden, uh-oh, now you have a tropical storm following that cold front to the north. That's all possible, but it's too far out to know. All right, so I'll, I'll post some more graphics later on some of this cool stuff and what I'm seeing on the latest trends, because this did not include the latest 12Z data that comes out in the afternoon, since I'm doing this in the morning. Uh, it doesn't include that data. Uh, but I just thought that would be a cool little, you know, Tuesday thing to talk about is some features that are going on. So if you live in central and northern parts of Florida, biggest cold front of the autumn season coming for the next few days, is it cold air? No, of course not. But is it cooler or less humid air? Absolutely. You'll notice a difference. Um, and uh, that's it. Have a happy Tuesday. Have a great day.